What's up, everyone? It is the Best Bot Kids Move and my co host, ILP Lord Gaming Addict. What is up? Another episode of Weapon well, I was about to, well, technically, Weapon Will Podcast, Plan Xbox, powered by Weapon Will uh, Patreon, Weapon Will Podcast. Shout out to the whole roster over there. Uh, we had a uh, Last week we did the Among Us. Uh, had a had a, had a, at least one victory in here. Earned a couple achievements you know, during that game night. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I I was an idiot. Like uh, I played one game as um as an imposter and messed up at the very beginning. So I, I killed someone and I didn't see them come. It was like <laughs> there's like three people that came around the corner. Like the yeah. moment I killed him, and the moment I saw that, I was like. I try, but it's like, look, man, well, you know, one person I might be able to convince them. I almost convinced them it wasn't me. All, everyone, the three people were lying. But see, with the Weapon World community, it's about who can make the other person laugh. It don't even matter on who's right or wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, no, but uh, no, that was that was a good time. I I I think I got maybe like five or six, five games in and before I ended up getting booting out because I forget like when you you have to like. I like pretty much I think bought it out or lagged out like during like the intermission of a game and then I lost my spot. I couldn't get back in because it was full. Um but that was cool. I you know I stayed in the chat um, um to hear everything out. Uh haven't been playing uh that, honestly that uh was like I think, the, I think the only thing I played in the past week. And uh, I resumed my Starfield playthrough um last night. Uh probably finish up this weekend. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I know you've been playing uh, Metaphor um, and a few other uh, games. Um, but, yeah, we got a, you know, a couple of things to get through within the next uh, hour or so. So I do want to ask you uh, about Metaphor, man. Um, uh, how is that treating you? That thing is, is, is up for – you think it gets Game of the Year uh, nomination? It is sitting at, I think, at like a 93, 94 – Yes, it definitely gets nominated. Does it win? Probably not. If it doesn't get nominated, there's something wrong. All right. What do you think still wins? Um, if I were a betting man, I would say, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this year has been a good year and like just gains, but there, there's not like a game that's just so far above the rest. It's mm-hmm. like game of the year, like. I guarantee you. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at like some of the recent, some of the recent um, releases. Obviously, uh, metaphor at like a 93. Um, uh, uh, what else? Uh, I know you know Astrobot sort of, uh, um, surprised a lot of people for some reason, and. Um, I don't know. If Dragon Quest hits it, I think there's more and more of a chance Astro Ball gets knocked out of mm-hmm. uh, Game of the Year nomination. Do um, you think Wukong still gets a nominee? Damn, if you think about it, there's a lot of games. I think, all right, so Wukong's definitely on the list that could potentially get nominated. I would say Astro Ball is, um, Metaphor is. Hmm. Start naming some games, man. Uh, probably. Didn't I, a Final Fantasy say, come out this year or no? Which, 16? Um, one of them came out this year. Uh, was there a uh, remake or something like that? Yeah, Rebirth. Uh, that That's that's definitely there. Hold on, I'm getting a call. I'm like, can you go through? Okay, so, I mean, I, th- there's a couple things I feel... What what is all the the games that came out this year? Because we've had like it's it's like people sitting there saying that like our our year has been like horrible. I'm not saying it's been like fantastic, like the best games ever got this year. But I think people are are hallucinating if they be thinking like there's no good games. Uh, I don't know if Wonders came out this year. I can't really. I know Suicide Squad's not going to be on that list. That's for sure. Uh, let's see what else. I've got a list up. A list, guys. Um, all right, so let's go over some of the games that has came out this year that is memorable to me, that might actually 
pull some something out here. All right, so we got we got Tekken Eight, which is generally not going to be a game of the year contender. Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, probably not. I, I mean, it's a fantastic game, but I would say Metaphor would probably get on there before that game would. Uh, Suicide Squad's definitely not going to be there. Persona Three Reloaded, I I wouldn't say that's going to be there either. Yeah, because I think that's a a fantastic game, but you know they generally try to stay away from turn-based games. I don't see multiple being on there. Uh, what is that? Uh, Space Marines Two. That might be a game of the year contender. You know, there's been a lot of good games that came out this year. It's just nothing is on like. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, even though how good of a game that was and how much it screamed quality, I still can't say that that's like, oh my god, definitely game of the year. It was a great game, don't get me wrong. But I don't think it was anything on that. If you guys, you guys get what I'm saying, man. You know, there's games that come out every year that you just like, even if you don't like them. Like, there's people that don't mess with Elden Ring or from software games in general, but when they saw Elden Ring, they knew that game was going to hit a little different. Uh, Unicorn Overload, that was a really good game. I highly doubt that it's going to get Game of the Year, though. Let's see what else. Uh, MLP The Show, probably not. Uh, Dragon Dogma 2, I don't know. That, that might get a contender. That might. Uh, Rise of Ronin. Uh, South Park Snow Day. I still can't believe they released that game. We're into April now, guys. Uh, let's see here. Man, there, not, not a lot came out in April. There's a Demon Slayer game, but I don't think anyone ever really played that. Hades 2, which that's a, a new release, so I, I don't know if that's going to be something. You know, be feel free, guys, to to write in the comment section what games you think is going to get game of the year. Hellblade Two, as much as I thought Hellblade Two was a a solid experience, uh, I don't think it's a game of the year contender. I think it's too short. It's got too many uh, shortcomings. Uh, Destiny Two, the final shape. I think it deserves something. Maybe not game of the year. Jimmy got me Tensei. You yeah, know, it, it it did pretty good. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, Atlas, they, they were eating this year. They were they were eating. You got that Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. That Age of Heroes. I know Bond likes those games. What else, man? Blunt Lock. I didn't really like that. I ended up dropping that game. It just, I felt like there was a lot of uh, core issues to that game. Wasn't like the worst game in the world, but it definitely, you know, it, it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't deserve all the craze it was getting. Uh, Black Myth Wukong, that, that's definitely a game with your contender possibility. Concord, I don't know. September, man. The casting of Frank Stone, I kind of want to try that. I'm not going to lie. But I don't think that's like a game of the year contender. Man, Smooth is taking forever on this phone call. Astro Ball, I'm going to go through the whole damn year before he gets done. This is what I'll be dealing with, guys. Yo, know, Smooth's the host, but realistically, I'm running shit around here. Smooth just be like, got to gotta take 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Uh, Star Wars. That's definitely not a game of the year contender. Final Fantasy 16 on PC. Frostpunk 2 might be... That's probably going to get nominated from some things. Not game of the year, though. We're in October now. Yeah, there, there's just a lot of stuff going out, man. And, and it's like I said, it's nothing against anything. But I think we all know that when it comes to... When it comes to certain games, we just know that that game is going to be it. We 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 know that. We know that that game is game of the year contender. Nothing nothing uh could be said about it. And, and I think that's the 
the biggest thing. Like, even though we've had a really good year, I would say we haven't really had a year of like games that come out and they're just so far above the rest that that like you deem them game of the year right now. Now there are a lot of good games that came out this year that definitely are game of the year contenders. It's just there's nothing released this year that makes me think it's so far above the rest that it's definitely getting nominated. So I think that's uh, the biggest thing that we got going for us right now is that we we just got a lot of options, uh, but there's nothing like clearly above the rest. You know, it, it, I don't know what Smooth wants to start with, but um, you know, I, I think we I think I'm gonna talk a little bit about this Halo developer why smooth finishes this phone call because i was the whole year already and this man still ain't back so for those of you that don't know there's an ex-developer he is definitely a, a disgruntled employee to a degree he po he posted a bunch of a bunch of posts i think it's on linkedin i don't know where he was just essentially you know saying you know i gave 343, 3, 13 years of my life. And not only did they show me the door and didn't respect anything I did for the company, they took the, uh, the, the concepts that I said we needed to do, that uh, the whole team said they needed to go to Unreal Engine years before it happened. And they ended up going over there long, bef uh, long after they let all these people go. Like the way it was, you know, I read this, like a lot of these people got rid of the people that was being you know, pro problematic. And then what they ended up doing is after they got rid of them, they ended up going to Unreal Engine anyway. So a lot of people feel a way about, you know, what is going to happen to three, four, three. And is that management, is that, that infrastructure still a problematic? Or are they still going to be in, uh, you know, really hard to, to work with? Cause if you think about it, man, there's a lot of things going on in this industry that we don't know that goes on. And what I like is at the end, he, he tagged Jason Schreier. So knowing him and knowing Jason, Jason going to, going to jump to that with the quickness. He's going to want that exclusive story. And hopefully within the next, I would say six months. Uh, well, I wouldn't want it being six months. Hopefully within the next few months, we're going to see like a giant like exposed article on 343. Because there's some stuff that I know about this 343 stuff that I wish I could talk about, but I can't. Uh, but even though I can't talk about it, it would be nice if this happened and, you know, Jason Schreier gave us that that exclusive. That way I can you know, publicly talk about some of the issues that I have with the franchise that I have with the company. You know, there's a lot of things that need to change guys. There's a lot of things that need to change. Uh, so that's pretty much when it comes down to that. It's like, look, and you know, what I don't like is you guys know, I, I make a lot of Xbox content on my channel. I've been experimenting a little bit more, but I do make a lot of Xbox content and some of these Xbox people, man, <laughs> they, they low key, like blacklist me because, you know, I do make that kind of content. You know, I'm considered a doom and gloom merchant uh, because I My make bad. that kind of content. You're yeah. fine. And, you know, we're talking about the X developer uh, post. Did you see that? Yeah. 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 So, you know, I, and I pretty much told the, you know, the, the listeners, it's like, look like this, regardless, you know, if you go look at my comment section on that video I made yesterday, Oh, a lot of people said, oh, this is just a, a, a disgruntled employee. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. well, when Jason Schreier covers this on PlayStation people, these Xbox influencers and stuff, they, they take it as, as facts. But when it's, when it's Xbox, they're, 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 they're mad because they got fired. And I'm not, I'm sure he is upset he got fired, but here's the thing. Like, Smooth, we know that there's, there's clearly something going on. Uh, uh, when it comes to to Halo, like, look, did this dude stretch some of this? Yes, because I actually mm -hmm. talked to people, and, and Smooth could tell you I am connected in the three four three sphere. And uh, they said, look, some of the things he said 
is not necessarily lying, but stretching the truth a little bit. But a lot of the stuff he said is just harsh truth. Okay, what do you mean? Just the har harsh truth. Like, the majority of he said is just what is how it went down. Um, like, I even, I even talked to him and I asked him a couple months ago when all the restructuring happened. I uh, No, was that? No, I, I asked I asked the chick that. I said, yo, you know, is this going to fix the bulk of the issues? And she told me that it fixes a lot of the issues, but there's still problematic people that's at 343 that still have power. But it's not like it used to be where they were just making bad decisions and you had nothing. You, you were outnumbered. Now, it's more like 50-50. The people with bad ideals are just about have the same amount of numbers of supporters the people that have good ideals. Um... I, stuff like that is really subjective, um, in my opinion, what I think of, like, who's right, who's wrong. Um, honestly, I, I don't really even care about that stuff. And I feel like every once in a while, when a, a disgruntled employee would come out and, um, and, and complain or say anything, um, you know, and they have, if, if they have the right to uh, go ahead and do that, I, but I hate when... They they come out and they embark, I guess, fear on the community, um, and like create this thing where you just can't enjoy whatever's you know going on, and it's it's really it's really annoying, honestly. Um, because at the end of the day, I don't know what they're working on. I don't know what's going to be good, what's going to be bad for something I'm not going to play in three for the next three to four years, um. And, and honestly, it's just wasted energy. Like gaming, the gaming community in the industry is full of like sissies, some soft ass sissies. And I say that because in any other industry where you know people are laid off or people are you know quit or people go to a new place, they don't waste all that energy talking about their last like job. You know what I mean? Like when no, you're in a new all the time. No, not in, yeah, just, not in, you, you, not publicly no, like no, this. Hold up, hold, no, it publicly? happens publicly all the time. Yeah, but the thing is, you're not keeping up with these other industries. I do like keep. That's the thing. I do keep up with the uh, other industries and stuff like that. I actually, I just, I'm not invested in them. But as far as as far as work life and stuff like that, I follow other industries, and it's it's not this toxic. To the point. And well, okay, if, explain explain me what to, explain to me the toxic part. How the, the, the toxic, toxic part is when people come out attacking studios or they 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 their agenda is to have a, a, a net negative outcome for it. It's like so. What's the point of you telling this? Like uh, like so, like I don't care so, what you went through years ago. I don't care. Like you're no longer there. Like like so why does it matter? It's not relevant no more. No, it's no it's no longer relevant. You were you you were too oh, pussy. It, it, you it, were too pussy to tell us about it when you were actually working there. Now you want to uh, wait until you know they make some changes. They change their name. They're they're trying to turn a new leaf, and now you want to come and piss on it. Fuck you. But, like you know what I mean? I can't but, stand people but, like that. But my my thing is, if if we could come out here and run our mouth about the stuff, why can't the people that actually went through the experiences run their mouth on stuff? No, no, no. Like, well, me, well, the difference between the all other. we're doing is going, okay, so some people might, I'm not one of the only people that don't really have an issue, had an issue with 343 in their games. I thought their games were better than Bungie games. In my opinion, I think Bungie's, you know, Magnus Prime was, you know, Halo 3, you know, and and and, and that was that. And well, that's I agree to a point. I feel like a lot of Bungie... Uh, love is nostalgia like it re like realistically you know it's what i said when it come to halo in their prime days like look they made phenomenal games and i would say mm -hmm. bungie's made the better overall halo games that has stood this the test of times but if you take the nostalgia out of it i would say that you know people like to throw that nostalgia part in there more than anything yeah and halo games have not stood the test of time the, the 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 original three they're hard to go back and uh play um they're good well, they're 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 good well, what i'm saying is that they they're loved that's what i'm saying yeah. and that's more so i think that's nostalgia like the thing is is that yeah these games were great you know back then people weren't harder or as hard on xbox as they are now they're, they're you know people didn't have a reason to hate uh xbox so that's a a, a part of it um, cause when I play, the thing is when I play video games and when I'm, when I play Halo, right, 
I I I look at these sales like I'm like what makes this game less than you know you know the original Halo or the uh, Halo Two. I hate when a game comes out that has improved on so many factors, right? Uh, whether it's visually, whether it's gameplay, whether the way the game feels, how how they manage to modernize it, how they manage three four people don't understand three four or three found ways to balance Halo in such a way I don't think anybody could balance it, a it, shooter it, that has that see, went through three different decades. The reason that I can't take that away from them is because at the end of the day, I feel like Halo uh, under Bungie made more consistent Halo. Like, 343 has always dropped an entire section of the game, dropped the ball on it. Like every game. Now, you can say what you want about Bungie, but for the most part, Bungie was consistent. Didn't matter what Halo game. Mm Mm-hmm. Bungie was always yeah. consistent making Halo. But Bungie had a uh, uh, their story. They stuck to it. The 343 took over it. And the thing is, 343 was afraid to put their foot on whatever it is that we're doing because they're fan because the Halo fans and are, are bitches. Uh, they're sissified and they don't know what they want. So the thing is, every 343 Halo attempt felt like a reboot because oh, I don't like the, 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 this. I don't like the, 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 that. So all right, well, let's start again. Let's start a new path. You know what I mean? From four to five and then from like infinite, which felt like more of a a, a, a restart or a reset. And it's just like, they're never satisfied. And these have been three, some of the best individual Halo games I've ever played. And, and I get that. So you mean, until they make a better game than Halo 3 and 2, they, they I, didn't make... You, I personally felt like they played the and made... I feel like they made better games than Halo 3. Okay, the, what, what is a better game than Halo 3? I personally think 4 and Infinite is better than Halo 3 as a total... Pa- and then I'm not saying they're better than Halo 3 because Halo 3 was bad in any such way. The thing is, is I felt like there were upgrades to what was de- uh, delivered in Halo 3. And remember, Halo 4 was the same generation as Halo 3. Like, and I felt like there was, I felt like the story of Halo 4 was stronger. It was more emotional. Um, Obviously, the graphics were better. And uh, the multiplayer, I felt they did something. They modernized it for a time. And at a time when Black, what Call of Duty was taking over. And it it felt, it felt like an an appropriate change. Um, Halo 5, as far as multiplayer, I think Halo 5, the best multiplayer experience I've ever had in Halo, like hands down. Halo Three wins because of uh, the, the the just the time I was it was, it was college it was three sixty whatever but it in actual as far as gameplay loop and whatnot and Halo Five I, to me in my opinion is the best multiplayer experience hands down that I've had and Halo Infinite I thought was a a, a really solid experience between one and I think. In my opinion, Infinite was probably one of the better campa- uh, better Halo campaigns, not as far as story, but as far as the the open concept, the boss, the the, the boss encounters that you came up with, the the, the appropriate boss yeah, fights. That, that, that's where we have to disagree. I, I feel like a lot of Halo games have better stories than Halo Infinite. I feel like Halo Infinite, uh, its story w- w- was scattered, didn't make sense in a lot of ways. They talk about this giant war, but don't really go into detail what happened. Like it, it, it just felt like very rushed and very, uh, you know, not fleshed out. Like that, that was my issue with it. You, you, you tell so like it's like I told you, I wanted more. I thought what would have been better if they had like more of a Far Cry perspective, where like they had the map sector uh, segregated to like different people. Mm-hmm. And when like you do enough damage in that area, you get to actually fight that general or that captain. And like the whole time you're getting up to him, it tells you why that person was essential to them winning the fight against the humans, the UNSC. Like to me, they talk about this giant war and then you're trying to find Atriox. And it, it, it just felt like they switched the story like three times. Like the guardians are essentially gone, but they're not gone. They don't really tell you what happened with them either, do they? Like, it, it, like, not we we can we could say that the perspective of the open world was cool, but to me, it wasn't executed very well at all. Um, I personally think it was well done, and I just wanted more of it. Honestly, I I, I clapped at the end of that uh, campaign. The the only you thing clapped? I. 
Yeah. You clapped. <laughs> I clapped because I was really impressed. You guys, my wife. Um, I the problem I the only problem I have with Halo Infinite uh, campaign is the fact that I felt like they set up a situation where they could keep adding uh, through time, and they gave up on it, and that's what makes me hate the campaign. Not because the campaign was any bad; it's because uh, three four three. Uh, like other Xbox related stuff, they fail to follow through and they, they fail to stick to their guns. That's the only problem I have with 343. So, I don't think changing their name and going on Unreal Engine 5 changes that. The fact that they're they don't follow through with what they set out to do, they they, they listen to these fans because they think the fans know what they want, the fans don't know what they want, um, at uh, all. I will agree with you that a lot of the Halo fans. Uh, they don't care about pushing the brand forward. They just care about playing what they played when they were 14, 15. Uh, and that's not realistic in today's market. You have to push the brand forward. I felt like Halo 5's multiplayer was the best middle ground you could possibly have. Yeah, so, but like, you know. I, I felt like they needed to take that foundation and build off of that. Uh, but the one thing I will agree with you is 343. Uh, they have zero balls when it comes to standing up to their community. Uh, the moment something, and, and I'm not saying don't listen to your community, but sometimes you have a vision that you have to see through to see yeah. if it works or not. And yeah, I they, feel like every Halo was uh, was directed by the community and not 343 themselves. And 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 they're sta- and so 343 is the king of not standing on business. That's the thing; they don't stand on business. They they don't stick to what they want to do because they're too fragile and uh, too afraid. But even with that, it, the way that people shit on 343, the, the way that people shit on their games, uh, people don't realize that 343 and all their Halo games still rank at the higher tier of game releases. And so these are these are always mid to high 80s, which is on average is better than most games produced under Xbox anyway. So it's it's always going to be a one of the better games. Like people treat like an eighty six by anyone else, like it's a game of the year contender. But an eighty six on a Halo game or an eighty four on a Halo game is god awful. It's that. the worst yeah. thing I've ever seen. And, it's I, like, it, and as far as like the you know people people really do act like Halo Infinite had like a seventy Metacritic, like and it, it was it it was pretty high it was like 86 i think it was 87 for a long time and dropped it, to an 86 yeah let me see halo infinite which like I said, and people forget when halo infinite first came out it was well received in terms especially the multiplayer the multiplayer was the early release of the multiplayer and then the campaign jumped in and people you no know, liked it it was good it's just that you know it's still standing at 87 right now and, it, and that's a lot is that 110 the Xbox version? Yeah, the Xbox version. Um, 110 reviews, uh, and it's, it's at a solid 87. If you See, round it up, me, that's a 90. To <laughs> round it up. I don't consider it an 87. I would say that that game is more like an 83 or 84 to me. And my favorite um, gaming publishing, who's no longer with us, Gaming Game Informer, rated it a 93. That, See, that I, I, I hate gaming. Did you? I hate gaming, Did bro. you... S- did you see where what's his name uh the the ex developer said that um that that uh what what's the company that used to work with them gamestop no the the company that used to work with uh three four three creative oh, assembly uh, oh yeah creative no uh, no is that creative no assembly? not creative sim- assembly but um oh my god no not creative the assembly they did the, the rts that, uh, it yeah. was um Damn, I, I, it, it escapes me. The one that was doing the Battle Royale, all right? That you said. Yeah, I can find it here in like th- five seconds. But yeah, did you see where they said that um, that cu- that game was uh, that developer? He wished that they were working on the game. Uh, certain, uh, certain Infinity. Certain Infinity, that's what it is. yeah. He, he was saying that he wishes that Certain Infinity were able to work on Halo permanently because they had more passion for the game. Yeah. Like, to me... What the issue seems to be when it comes to Halo mm. was the management and their bad choices trickle down to the rest of the company. Yeah. You want to hear something I got to put my green screen up, so keep talking. You want to hear something crazy, right? There is a Halo, a recent Halo in the 2020s that got a 91 Metacritic. And that Halo is Halo 3 ODST, uh, the one that they added to the Master Chief Collection. 
I don't know if you heard me, but uh, they they oh, but that's based off four uh, four uh, critic uh, reviews. So never mind. I won't even you know dwell on that. But I think uh, I, again, I think people have a, a nasty uh, look at the the, the critical the, the the way that Xbox games and even Halo are rated. The the critical responses is like they're good. It's never good enough. Like I said, an 87 for any other game is, is potentially a game of the year candidate. Yeah, I will agree with you. When people talk about Halo Infinite, they really do be acting like that it had like a 70 Metacritic or something. Yeah. Well, which is which is funny. If you look at like all of Xbox's like games that they mm -hmm. either bought throughout the years or published at this point. Yeah. There's been very few games that's below 70 or even an eight for that matter. Like the majority of their games are eights and above. Uh, but the problem is, is when 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 they take a shit, they take a shit. Redfall, like, mm -hmm. like. But you know, it's funny. Like, I would say Concord, like, now no one can talk shit. Like, they both have that flop of the the generation game out now. Yeah. Oh, well, not out because uh, I, I still uh, I am very much interested in trying to finish Redfall. Like, I haven't like I haven't really uh, played it. Um, That's what you, 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 I'll play it with you, and uh, what you need to do is make a video saying playing Redfall uh, in 2025 and release it next year. Okay. That's what's up. Um, I want to talk about uh, Starfield. You know, I've been a defender of the Metacritic, uh, uh, not not the Metacritic, a uh, defender of the Shatter Space. Now, I'm enjoying m my time in Shatter Space to a, a degree. Two issues I'm having. One, I is, is there a way to just call my vehicle, or do I have to go to a station and, and, and call? I already bought it, but I just want to be able to, because I'm still playing the game. I don't know. As if it as as if it doesn't have a vehicle, and I'm like, when I'm here, and I don't know where to go to to get to retrieve my vehicle, because um, I think I will have a better time if I get my vehicle. Um, the other thing is, um, I am finding it a little bit boring, um, as far as like the. Um, like the story so far and the uh, the biome that you're in of Varun and whatnot, the I'm not a fan of the the pink, purple neon thing for that. Um, so at this point, I'm not, I don't mind the game because uh, people are saying it's not as long. I I, I don't I want to be in the, that world for twenty plus hours because I, I I don't I don't like it. You know what I mean? I, I like I do like the characters that you come across. And some of the you know the plots and the subplots that are that are uncovering, um, so it's definitely worth a playthrough. I'm definitely going to finish it, but I think for me personally, I think I'm I'm, I'm finding it it's um, not as compelling, and I'm pretty sure things will open up and get deeper. I felt I, I felt like the first encounter with the brothers, I thought that was pretty cool, um, but that was a sub quest. That wasn't like a you know a primary quest. And then uh, there's the sci uh, the scientists that I found randomly. Who want samples and they're sending you all over the place to the point I don't like quests like that. So I, I, I like, I, like I, that's gonna be a, a quest I finish if I'm in the area of the rest of the samples. <laughs> if I'm if I just happen to be in the area of the samples, then I'll continue on with it. But um, Shatter Space, like I said, I, I think the uh, the Metacritic did increase to like a sixty or something like that. But I do um, again, I think Starfield is a game people are hard on. Um, you know, because if this game came out in 2012, 2011, 2013, people would love it. It would be game of the generation. But because it's associated with Xbox, I still that's what I still believe. I don't think it's people don't like the game because so this game has this, almost some of the same consistencies that exist in your Oblivions, that exist in your Skyrims, that exist in your Fallout. And now they have the, they, they have an issue with it because it exists in Starfield, you know, Um some i'm going to talk about something right quick like i was watching xbox era shout out to special nick uh he made a um a comment on like game reviews and why he doesn't watch them or he doesn't like listen to reviews because most reviews are like they're just advertisements they're they're they don't really tell you hey it's the is the game fun to play i i, I and the thing is i watch and listen to a lot of reviews and most of the reviews when they when they're talking about games, I can never find anything yeah, from they, these reviews just, that I can't connect that I can connect with. 
they strictly just talk about like oh yeah that that's why when i make videos it's like me just talking to someone i don't make videos like trying to like i do make a video i i tell you my opinion on whether or not you should buy it and i go mm -hmm. from there mm -hmm. like it, it's not they'll, they'll be like oh you know the 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 story is so vibrant like like they they i feel like this industry i agree with them 100 percent uh especially like ign and stuff mm -hmm. they care so much about the relationships they have they always have to word things a certain way or, or structure things in a certain way yeah where it's like you know i can't just tell you about something i have to tell you this so like i feel like as bad as it sounds everyone just sounds like robots now yeah yeah it's, it, every review is very samey and the thing That's is why that I feel like people like acg uh succeed so much because their reviews like feel like he's just talking to, mm -hmm. to someone next to him like it, it, you know obviously you know and what's funny is he doesn't script anything acg just goes off the top of his head yeah which i think is impressive i really do think that's impressive um what i think is uh um again it's very samey with a lot of these reviews like their talking points the verbiage and it's just like you know what, and that's why I I, I sit there and I'm like you know what, I want to I, I gotta change the way I I do review do reviews like I gotta I have to do it like when I'm talking to people at work or like like hey how you think about this game and I don't sit there and tell them like you know nah let's get to the nitty gritty is it good is it bad what's bad about the game what's good about the game that's all that's all and they don't they rarely talk about the gameplay like they act, like they will spend ten minutes talking about like you know the performance or whatever when. Like, most likely, most people aren't going to even pick up on most of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I could pick up on a 60-frame game, but my brother probably can't. Uh, yeah. and, and they spend more time talking about that or something related to, like, what the casual audience isn't going to ever notice. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, that's true. Um I don't know what my headset's doing over there. Thank you. Um, all right. So right now there's a, it looks like Xbox is, is getting a small win, right? So uh, Xbox, uh, Google is being pretty much forced to open up apps to have their own stores on, on, on their uh, platform. So, like, we should now be able to, you know, download an app, and if that app has a store or is a store, we can be able to make purchases. How It's crazy the, the fact that, you know, there was a restriction on that. So, Google was the first man down. I think Apple should be next. Uh, but what this is allowed to do is Xbox. Now, they updated their Xbox app. Um, this is the reason why they merged the Game Pass app. So now that you Xbox app, you can buy games directly from the app. You can play games directly from the app and uh, and stream um, for the app. And so they are able to go all in. Um, so shout out to them uh, for being able to do that. Uh, that's going to help them with their games, uh, with game consumption for games where the, the, the box isn't very popular at all. Um, this is a big deal because the Android platform isn't just phone, phones. It's it's um, it, it's tablets. It's it's Chromebooks. It's it's all that jazz. Like that. That's that's what is uh, that's what is there for. And now uh, they're able to pretty much uh, pretty much have direct access to you know millions upon millions of people who might not have. Uh, the Xbox. Sarah Bond put up a ruling that I'm about to just pull up on um, uh, on our page right quick. Let me just read this excerpt. It says uh, the court's ruling to open up Google's mobile store in the U.S. will allow more choice and flexibility. Our mission is to allow more players to play on more devices, so we are thrilled to share that starting in November, players will be able to play and purchase Xbox games directly from the Xbox app on Android. So shout out to them for uh, getting that done. I know this has been their play. This is the reason why they purchased Activision Blizzard and you know in invested heavily in, uh, in mobile. Now, we all know just from a historical perspective, Xbox's plans, Microsoft 
plans and how they try to predict the way the industry is going. It, it almost never works. It they they've never hit it, hit it. They either too early or they too late or they just completely missed the boat. Uh, but hopefully, this is something that uh, translates well because their consoles are suffering. Um, I think in Europe, uh, sales are like down there. I think hardware sales down. 58%, not sure how that's possible. Um, and uh, uh, there, um, there's reports of them pulling out of certain African uh, countries and whatnot. Um, you have any thoughts onto that and what's going on with Xbox? And do you, do, with these things, like, is Xbox accelerating themselves out of the hardware business? Yeah, I actually think that this, uh, this ruling... Is good for consumers, but it's bad for gaming in general. Because I feel mm -hmm. like now, since these companies feel like they can go for a quick uh, mobile bag, they're gonna pivot way too much trying to do so. Mm -hmm. And what, what we've seen from like the Resident Evil stuff that's on mobile, like you know all these big profile games that are on. Have you seen what they've sold? What on Resident Evil? Uh, like all these. <clears throat> games that's that's like triple a products mm -hmm. putting on mobile no they don't sell well at all no no so it's just like no one wants to play games on their phone to that degree now it's okay to play certain experiences on your phone but these yeah. companies especially microsoft act like they're such this big ass gold mine in the mobile market when they're seeing other people doing it and the money's not there yeah, but I think the difference though is that for them, when you make that purchase on that store, like that, that's on your, that's also for your computer, that's also for your Xbox. It's not like, and, and, and I feel like, I feel like that that's that's okay, but it's one thing to build an infrastructure to allow gaming on your mobile. Mm -hmm. They have shown so much. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna game on. On your smart TV, how many people you know probably realistic are going to game on their smart TV? Um, I, I'm sad. I, I personally don't know a lot, but you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised when people see what it is. They're trying to get this younger audience, but they're not, they're going to play on their tablet. They're going to play. Uh, they they're not going to play on a look. You would have to pretty much make that input la latency mm -hmm. one to one before people start replacing consoles. And I have not played an experience that replaces it one to one. Because when you what what is the biggest game? Fortnite. Do you think mm -hmm. you could play that with a with a, a big input lag? No. Um but there are also like games where it's not that, you know no, not that the input latency is not that big of a deal depending like, is, on what you're play, the, playing. Is the younger audience playing those games though? And the younger audience are playing you no know, Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, uh, those uh, you no know, simple simple games that you know just become popular that has like absolutely no you know power or anything like that. Um, I, I, you know, they just want access. I understand um, what they're going for. Um, you always want to be everywhere um, as much as possible, have much exposure as possible. I think though. The concern on Xbox is just like, okay, at, you know, what are you willing to give up to get there? You know what I mean? And as a console gamer, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of the moves. As a businessman, I understand them. But as a console gamer, as just a fan of the art, fan of the hobby, uh, and fan of the platform that they built, uh, I'm not a fan of it because I feel like we're being left out um, – to dry, because um, they're I don't think they're they're treating the console business hey, man, well. I think if I saw like like people generally feeling like they want to play on their phones, mm -hmm. I would be more for it. But almost every time that anyone does anything on phones with AAA uh, production, mm -hmm. it flops. Yeah, yeah. E even streaming streaming doesn't do well, and, and for some reason it's it's like it's like the games of service. Back in the day, everyone, oh, your games and service ain't going to work. Then a couple people made it work, and now everyone wants it. And then certain companies, like even PlayStation, are arguably risking their whole business mm -hmm. on games as a service because it worked for one or two people. And that's what I see here. You know, uh, people like King are making millions and billions of dollars a year. But yeah. 
they look at that mobile market of people playing Candy Crush and think they're going to play Resident Evil 4 Remake next. No, that's not how it goes. Uh, most of the time when people put a lot of time into a mobile game, there's a gameplay loop that's just addicting. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the production of the game. No, absolutely. Um, the other thing that uh, sort of uh, came up is that obviously we talked about you no know, Halo and whatnot, but IGN uh, had it unlocked and they they're, they're it's like they're coming around to the fact yeah, that I had why a bunch of people send me that <laughs> that Halo uh, Halo and Gear is uh, going to PlayStation and whatnot. Uh, Again, this is never going to go away because of Microsoft business updates. And, you know, and the crazy thing is since then, right, that's been almost, a, you know, that was in January. Since then, what we had, they had High Fire uh, Rush, which is no longer now um, an Xbox IP anymore because the studio sold and they sold the IP to another publisher. Uh, they've had uh, Grounded and Sea of Thieves. Uh, and you know what? I hope to God. That grounded is uh, that uh, Hi-Fi Rush Two is so successful that it just makes them regret doing the shit in general. Yeah, um, you have grounded Sea of Thieves and uh, Pentiment all go to PlayStation, and then I think Indiana Jones uh, confirmed to be a timed exclusive for Xbox, but go on PlayStation shortly after, and then Doom launching day and date on um, PlayStation. Um, uh, next year when it comes out on xbox so because of that so not a lot has happened but we kind of get it into the point and i think ign now is at the point where they need to cancel the podcast and lock they shouldn't have it they shouldn't have they should have a platform agnostic uh podcast go, go, uh, go, go the greg miller ways what yeah said. yeah yeah i mean because it, it makes no sense anymore um i think um ever since then you know the thing is, Xbox can't announce anything. None, no Xbox uh, uh, announcement will be met with the same level of hype anymore. Because you have the platform, then you have the games, and the part of that hype, part of that, part of that excitement, is the fact that oh, this is like exclusive to this platform. This is like this is what's popping on Xbox. I don't think the Game Pass effect, and I'm a big fan of Game Pass. I don't think the Game Pass. Oh, this is on Game Pass. It's like yeah, it's good. I don't have to buy it. You know what I mean? That's that's the only thing. But it, I, I'm not like I'm not like saying yo, I got this on Game Pass. You gotta buy it. Uh, no, 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 no. It's just like it's 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 a lost art, and um. Honestly, I hate Xbox for it. You know what I mean? People, if people get mad at me, uh, I'm, 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 I, I'm a diehard Xbox fan. I, I, I love the platform. I love the brand. Will buy their uh, consoles until they no longer exist. And when their consoles no longer exist, I will probably migrate to PC fully before I become like a full blown yeah, PlayStation I, I, gamer. So I've been seeing you post a bunch of uh, what, what, what. What call what uh, graphics card should I buy? You want to elaborate a little bit more on that? Is it oh, already yeah. something you considering? <laughs> no, no, I, yeah, yeah, no. The, the, the sooner I can get the the PC of my dreams or build the PC of my dreams, the 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 the, the, soon, the less I would care. The only thing I have about PC because the, the, the PC gaming is not as is <sighs> consistent and convenient as it is it's console gaming. Like you know, I prefer. Plat the console is UI and simplistically, but at the end of the day, it's so I don't have to you know fork out another seven hundred dollars for like a PlayStation Five Pro or for the next Xbox Series, uh, I can get a PC today that's already going to be better than those. So right now my PC is probably a little bit better uh, than you know the Series X and probably on par with a PS Five Pro if I'm not mistaken. Uh, except I got a lot more memory. Uh, uh, RAM uh, versus, except for my, I don't like the 3070 Ti's. Is uh, I don't, I don't really like it. But so right now I have a 3070 Ti. I got a 4070. Um, like my job, I was able to come up on something. Uh, that that would be, you know, obviously an upgrade for me. But the thing is, is like, okay, this is a modular upgrade. If I just take it as is, what if I take, you know, some of the stuff in here that are valuable and might be valuable to some other, so I can get what I want, what I personally want. I want like a 4080 TI or a 4080 Super or a 4090. That's what I want. And I can, I, I don't mind rebuilding my PC 
around that, uh, get a high end CPU, uh, get like, you know, three, like, you know, two to four terabyte SSDs, one for just running OS and three for just gaming and storage and whatnot. Cause it has to, for, for me to be happy with my PC experience, like I, I, I gotta be able, I can't have any bottlenecks. I gotta be able to, uh, do videos. But you're always gonna have a bottleneck to a degree because there's always gonna be a game that's not optimized good. Like, like it doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna have issues at one point in time. PC gaming, like that's just part of the game. My like, thing is though, is it unreasonable issues, right? Is it uh, like the thing is is unreasonable? Uh, or unre like the thing is, like at the end of the day, like if I get the computer that I want, the supercomputer of my build, and I would honestly, if I could find like a just an Xbox themed fucking case, uh, I, pff, I, I, you know I, I turn it into you a should, truly should, turn uh, to an Xbox, but. You know what you should do? You should ha have a, a case commission that looks like an Xbox Series X. That's what I would like, but I, obviously with the, the PC I want, it, it, it would have to be a big-ass Series X case. It can't be like a, a, a mini power, uh, tower PC, but... I'm pretty sure you can get that commission. Probably not even too expensive. A couple yeah. hundred dollars? Yeah. What I would like to do um, is... The thing is, is that 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 is the the next goal for me is like, OK, you know, I don't know what they're going to do with the um, next Xbox. But like in the meantime, before this generation is over completely at its end, because, like, again, Avowed, I'm looking forward to that game. I'm hoping they add a performance mode by launch. If not, I, I probably have to pl uh, play it on PC because I don't see why it would be stuck at. You know, thirty FPS. I know I can't do it on my my current PC build now. I I wouldn't be satisfied. Uh, so that's why I want to upgrade. Um, and this and the thing is, is so uh, again, you know, the way that you know Xbox is going, you kind of just have to like what people have to understand, what Xbox fans have to understand. Do you enjoy gaming, right? And if you enjoy gaming, how do you enjoy gaming? Are you are you do you only enjoy gaming on this particular platform because of what? Because the thing is, once you lose exclusives, right, you lose like the identity portion. So now I'm just gaming on this platform. Now, the thing that's holding me to Xbox, obviously, is achievements, uh, Game Pass and whatnot. Uh, but uh, in actuality, I mean, I can get that that I can get achievements. I can get uh, Game Pass also on PC. So it doesn't doesn't do anything for X. So the thing is, is I need to prepare for myself because I don't trust Xbox. So if they end up killing Xbox, put them in the in a position right now that they can kill off the consoles, which obviously I don't want them to do because I would prefer to just be Xbox. Right. But they could still be in gaming without having a console. And they just be the you know publishers on PC and, and, and PlayStation and Nintendo and cloud, which I think is stupid. Um, but and then I'll just come. Cons pretty much consume their products through uh pc um and then like the only thing I, I again that where i this xbox would have a have some sort of like value to keep their you know consoles around if playstation have opened their games up to all the platforms and they haven't fully committed to doing that yeah they did they, they're, they're testing the game on a nintendo switch they're putting all their games on pc but they have not uh, done anything for Xbox outside of MLB, and that was more so a licensing thing associated with the the league itself, not uh, PlayStation. Um, so again, like I'm not happy about it, um, especially that Xbox isn't producing. Like the thing is, PlayStation is doing a pro console, which I did pre-order. I, I traded in a, a, quite a few things. I, 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 my goal for the PlayStation Five Pro is not to spend a single dollar on my end for it that's the only way I, only way i would feel uh happy i mean purchasing at this it. point you, you you i mean at this point that that's pretty much done isn't it like oh yeah i have to bring in the rest of the stuff that's going to go towards it and whatnot uh it comes out when did it come out the seventh or it comes out on the tenth comes out i don't know i have no intentions on buying yeah. one yeah it's like and that's the thing is like when i when i do get it because the, the reason why i don't want to spend because once i do get it i actually now have to buy into playstation plus which i've been letting expire every time um because to, to get access to games and you know the games over there are relatively expensive um 
So the thing is, is like I do want to, you know, want to give it a try. I do, uh, you know, want one. Um, you know, I think what they're doing is good. But I say I bring that up because since the Xbox has opted to, you know, put out games on PlayStation, they're they're doing things that also screws them, right? You you put it on a competition. They have a platform that uh, that is coming out that has a a, a console that is I, I think maybe i don't know how many times stronger it is than a series x might be twice the power maybe one and a half times the power of the series x um so it's going to have an advantage if any of the developers decide to take advantage of that that your your console just won't have um and that's very unfortunate um and and they're not doing a pro like console a uh, mid-generation console so it's like okay you got that um i know they, their fallback is well pc but Okay, um, unless they, you know, release a, 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 a next generation console. Um, and they also have these games that are launching on PlayStation, right? Sure, like Indiana Jones, right? That launches day and date on Game Pass Ultimate, but it's probably not launching day and date on Game Pass Standard, which means that it will launch on a PlayStation console or early, before on, on, a, standard, on the Game yeah. Pass service, which is like at that point, you, what are you doing, right? Because now, if I was them, then I was like, you know what? For every game that I'm launching on PlayStation at a certain time, I got to make sure the game either launches that day on the standard service or before I can't. You can't do a situation where you're launching a game on a competitor's platform and not, you know, feeding your uh, customers. And I think, you know, this chase for greed and money and growth that Xbox is chasing um, it's an endless growth. Like, it, it, like the the the, the industry is only big enough to milk sir, uh, like x amount of gamers. What do you yeah. do when you hit that? Like, yeah. like you just shut shut the the floors down because you're not happy with billions of, of profit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. absolutely. I think yeah. There's there's only so many uh you grow. Like, I, when does the industry becomes uh satisfied and and it looks like it's never um but um again you know i'll be getting a ps5 pro it's probably stupid for me to get it because like my playstation both my playstations are super dusty right now extremely dusty i don't utilize it enough to justify the purchase That's why like i said like and like i said if i didn't have enough things to you know get to the point where it wouldn't cost me anything um i wouldn't have gotten it because i don't utilize the playstation that much but you know i am actively like I still actively play on my Xbox. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna crash out like a lot of these uh, <laughs> content creators uh, um, that I that I went completely rogue on Xbox. I'm not gonna, but like, no, I I play on my Xbox when I'm gaming because, like I said, the reason why I haven't been gaming uh, in the past month is because it's it's, it's 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 budget season for me at my job, and that just takes a lot of time, um, and I just I have to be focused. So. When I'm do when I am gaming, I'm gaming on you know Xbox. Uh, like you know what I mean. I um, mean, yeah, there's a lot of games I need to uh, catch up on. Like I said, I want to go th finish through the Starfield expansion. I want to go and try uh, and realistically play uh, Metaphor. I know Seafood just came to Game Pass um, and whatnot. So you didn't play that on PlayStation? No, I no, I don't know, no. I I know I was interested when it came to Xbox. So I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. I never got time to buy it, but now it's in Game Pass. And I installed it, and I was like, I'm gonna give it a try. It might be something I'd end up not liking. You know what I mean? I, who knows? Like, uh, who knows? Who knows? Um, I feel like a lot of games, especially that started out as PlayStation exclusives, were very overrated. You know, very over overrated at at some point. So, but um, but yeah, man. How long, um, how long, uh, my God, I'm trying to think what, what else was there? We, we got to talk about the change in Unreal and the Halo Studio change name. We, we didn't really talk we about talk that. About, we, I thought we talked about it. A part no, of we talked about what's his name being dis a disgruntled employee. Yeah, but it was based off. He only did that after the announcement. So I know, but we didn't bring up at all. Yeah. On, like what the. I, and that was just me pivoting because he was on the the phone, like yeah, no, absolutely. So Halo Infinite, not Halo Infinite. So three four three Industries is no longer exists uh, as three four three. They've changed their name to Halo Studios, which I don't mind. I like the name. 
And th- what's their name of this project that they're doing? Project, it's named after a Halo map. Uh, project uh, Foundry. Foundry, okay. So named after a Halo map Foundry where it, they, they made clear Project Foundry is not a game. It's not a... It's, it's just an internal project that they're doing. They're uh, testing out uh, games... Um, on Unreal Engine 5 or, or uh, prototypes that they're transitioning Halo to uh, UE5. They announced that they're working on um, multiple games, multiple efforts. So we can consider, you know, uh, remakes, mainline series, and probably, you know, they'll do the undertakings of the Halo Wars. Who knows? Um, but I've been told Halo Wars 3 is canceled. So probably okay. not. So. What we'll do is um, Halo. Uh, so pretty much they, they, they took the name. All the games are going to UE5, and they announced it. it the, the, the stuff that they show looks great in Unreal Engine 5. I mean, almost every game looks good in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, this opens up Halo to be... It actually allows them to retain talent and to, to get talent. So a lot of the issues that they had with like working on previous Halos is that their engine... You know the slip space engine. They didn't. Nobody knew how to work it. And then when they lay off, when they stopped these contractors, uh, you know they couldn't just bring in like. Uh, I guess the transition, the the working, you have to train people to work on that engine. Whereas Unreal is universal. Everybody knows it. You know, and it'll you know influence talented people to come. You know, because everybody has experience with Unreal Engine. And, you know, people could go from studio to studio and work on it. It will even allow, like, people like the Coalition to have, have more involvement on Halo. So I think it's, it's good from there. I'm not a big fan of the their, 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 their head of staffing. Um, uh, I don't know what that – hopefully they, they hire people on talent and um, experience, rather their sexual preference and what they identify as because uh, um, – Having somebody like that ahead of staffing, um, again, it brings up concerns, and you already see it online. I mean, I don't think – I mean, I will say this, you know, some communities are, are are very talented in certain areas. I mean, even some of the games that people hate uh, that have, like, all this DEI or uh, – Yeah, or I, I think egg, – They have a lot they, – they, they, they do – produce some high quality stuff uh, I, I think i think you know the the general concern is mm-hmm. just you know for the game itself but like if you have the actual criteria and yeah you you can actually you know benefit like are you going to benefit halo or you like and i think that's the biggest thing it's like because you know i don't know that individual person like there's a couple people people are talking about like as long as they actually are gonna benefit Halo, that's fine. Like, yeah, and that's the scary part. We don't know what they're going to do and what they're looking for, what the agenda is behind there. But it, it, it's a, it's 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 stupid that we have to think about it that way. But we know how that the mindset has impacted many industries, and um, it's it's a it's a legit concern. Um, as far as uh. Uh, the other take is that now that Halo's moving to Unreal Engine, Post Up bought this up, it does make it a lot easier for a Halo to be released on PlayStation. Normally, I agree with a lot of statements when it comes to that, but I don't think... Here's the thing. I've known about the... Now, maybe at the beginning that wasn't their intention. That's something that could be beneficial now. Mm -hmm. But I could say right now that that wasn't the intention when they moved to Halo, uh, to Unreal. Mm -hmm. I've known about the Unreal thing for how long, Smooth? Years at this point. Yeah, a couple years, yeah. So, Actually, shortly after Halo Infinite, yeah. Yeah, so, nah, like, I I won't agree with that. Now, is is that potentially something they do now because of the direction they're heading the company. Yeah, it's it's definitely a potential and you need to be looking at it. Uh, but I don't think that was the point in this move because that's the, the narrative I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I think um, again, it's like I'm happy about it because I think Halo, I always thought I was always happy with Halo looking at it. The only concern I had about Halo 
moving to another engine was I always thought the engine was responsible for the way Halo felt. Um, there's no other shooter uh, that felt like Halo, not in, at least until they made what's that other game that tried to rip off Halo? It's called um, it was like Split, something split yeah where there split where it was like portal and halo at the same time it was weird um split gate or something like yeah, that yeah yeah so they had like it had sort of like halo mechanics and i think that was built on unreal engine 4 um so that was my only concern about the engine is like you know it needs to feel like halo if you get the game to still remain feeling like halo uh but on unreal engine and is looking that good looking that crisp and whatnot uh then yeah i'm all for it um I'm happy that they uh, they made this change. They changed the name. It it I, I like the name. I just don't. I'm I'm just over prototypes and you know tech demos. I I want to see. You know I'm hoping that them announcing this is a sign that hey next year at the showcase they're gonna show off Combat Evolve remake. Well, That's the only thing I hope to see from this. Otherwise, it's a waste of time to share this stuff with us now. What I was told. Is that there was a chance we could have seen something this year on Halo, so uh, probably next year you will see something. I don't know if it will be like, I don't think it will come out anytime soon, but I do think there's a chance you will see something. Okay. Okay. Well, in that case, let's. Uh, did was there anything else that we missed, man? I felt like there was a lot that came on. You no know, metaphor. Xbox is marketing. They're doing a good job. I know I poked fun at uh, what was it, a uh, Mighty Keith for his uh, Xbox marketing rant. It, it was a dumb statement. It was There's a dumb no statement. Fun. It was a dumb statement. And uh, but like metaphor, you can't be sitting there screaming from the top of your lungs that Xbox needs to improve on how they market and what they market, mm -hmm. and then they they choose a winner for once. Because let's be honest here, Microsoft and Xbox tend to back the. I wouldn't say the losers of the industry, but the games that don't succeed the the, mo yeah. the most. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and this is one of the W's that they had. So yeah. it's just like, just give that to them, man. Like, stop trying to take every W and make it to a to a fucking uh, to an L. It's like it's okay. Now I understand from his perspective, he's not wrong in the terms of uh, you know when we, when you look at something like an Xbox and you know tricking people in, in, in marketing because that's all marketing is 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 kind of like subconsciously making people think it's only on your platform yeah uh i get it from his perspective he makes 100 percent true xbox gamers don't normally buy jrpgs yeah, to, but to a he... huge degree hold on let me finish but you're never going to nurture that audience unless you start building that audience yeah the uh the what makes his point as nice because he led with Atlas is terrible at marketing. You know what I mean? He he led with so it, 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 I almost disqualify the rest of the things he's saying. So even that he's had a point that Xbox typically don't buy. It's like no, that's the point is that's the reason why they should be marketing the game, right? So I'm just happy that Xbox has you know are actually marketing and it's visible. You could see it, the tangible marketing, the effective marketing. Now I don't know if it's going to lead. It's going to increase the Xbox sales, uh, probably not. But the game has awareness. People know it exists. Um, and uh, it's doing well. It's selling well. It is reviewing well. It's already and it's, sold a million, hasn't it? Yeah. And it's going to be a nominee for a uh, game of the year. So shout out to Xbox. I've also been seeing a lot of Call of Duty marketing. It looks like Activision has a budget for marketing and Xbox has a budget for marketing because Activision is marketing the game its own way. And then Xbox is marketing the game its own way. Uh, and I think they're both effective. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see. Uh, and that Call of Duty launches like in about like. Two weeks. This is the first time I've in a long time I've been excited for a Call of Duty game at launch because you know I had a good time with that beta. Uh, so I'm happy that all my like financial stuff is like you know done and just in time uh, to uh, play this uh, to play this game. But uh, shout out to marketing Xbox for marketing. I mean, I just feel like they need to you know market the box to the same degree uh, um, and and market, you know, Game Pass to the same degree so they can increase sales, they can uh, console sales, they can increase, you know, Game Pass subscribers. You know, Call of Duty obviously sells itself. It's going to be the best seller and it's also going to be a Game Pass booster. I'm curious to see how everything turns out. Does it cannibalize every Xbox user? That's what I want to know. You know what I mean? Where does Call of Duty sales land? Does it still, does Call of Duty still remain a number one seller 
on both Xbox and PlayStation simultaneously while also in Game Pass, I'm curious. I'm extremely curious. I think it's still going to sell well. Uh, I do think the Xbox copies will sell less. Yes. Uh, but at this time, I think that's one of the reasons they were more open to Call of Duty being on PlayStation because Xbox does have the least you know, consoles out there. So you could probably afford to take a little bit of a hit when mm-hmm. it comes to the Xbox sales. Uh, because I don't, I don't think a lot of people are going to like, because the like kind of weird where they're marketing. Because mm-hmm. to me, you know, there is some truth to like, uh, you know, Cog and, and Paris said, because that they were able to market Call of Duty on Game Pass to the degree that I feel like they want to. It would be everywhere yeah. on every platform, on every. So I do think there are some form of restrictions. But as far as mm-hmm. like, you know, I think you'll start to see the Game Pass subs uh you know go down a little bit from every year i don't mm-hmm. think it's going to be one of those things where like everyone knows game pass call of duty's on game pass this year yeah yeah no that's true um no that's a no you definitely make a good point um i'm looking forward to um definitely looking forward to uh Call of Duty this year, uh, obviously, and there's also obviously Indiana Jones in um, December. Uh, there's a couple games coming out in November. I don't think I'm. Uh, it was Stalker and Stalker and Flight Sim 24 come out like I think a day apart. I want to play the the casting of Frank Stone. What is that? I want to play Unknown uh, Unknown Nine. I think that's what it's called. Casting of Frank Stone's made by the people who made Until Dawn. Okay. Wait, the, speaking of Until Dawn, you know that game's like doing horrid, right? Right now? The yeah, appara- yeah, apparently like cons- people are considering it like another Concord this year. <laughs> like, yeah, that's 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 crazy. Which it's not another Concord. There ain't gonna ever be another Concord. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely insane, uh uh for that to I'm just still don't understand why they remake it, remade it or whatnot, but I guess they're making a lot of these games so that they can flourish on a PS five pro in some way. <laughs> Um, and which means that, you know, we as consumers are allowing developers to, uh, un- release unoptimized games and hoping that better hardware will solve the problem. Um, you got anything you want to, uh, say before we get out of here? No, you know, uh, we are getting a little bit better guys. Uh, it's just hard for us to like. Most of the time it's smooth. I ain't going to even try to front most of the time smooth be, yeah, we're going to do it tomorrow. And then, and then Smooth just doesn't reach out. And then the next day, he's like, "Well, I thought you were reaching out, Smooth. You're the host." Like, it's um, again, uh, again, it was just busy time, busy time. This is the reason why I don't run a a, a live podcast. Hey, so this this is our second week in a row we've been we, we've got. Now, obviously, this this one's not going to go up as early as last week's did yeah. because last week's uh, it, it, we did it early. But we, we're gonna find a time w- works for both of us. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys uh, for tuning in another episode of Play Xbox Podcast. Shout out to the Weapon Wheel Patreon um, and everyone who uh, supports. And, uh, yeah, I'll I'll give you guys an update on this whole PC project next uh, week because, I mean, by this time next week, I should be on that uh, on the the PC. It's going to be hoping to, you know, upgrade uh, masterfully. All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining us. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.